Vox Lux, Vox Lux, Vox Lux. In recent history, never have I actually walked into a theater more ready to love a film than Vox Lux. And to my pleasure and surprising amusement, it is the best first half of a film I've seen in a long while. The Vox is good. I'd leave before the Lux. I don't, don't know what to say. Like, I mean, what is Vox Lux? Well, I don't speak Greek. You've got Natalie Portman and Rafi Cassidy splitting the movie, uh, playing Celeste. You also have Jude Law with a magnifique Brooklyn accent for a good two hours of this film's runtime. It's a film about uh, this school shooting that occurs. Celeste is wounded. And at this national gathering moment, this sort of service for the fallen, she is out of the hospital and she performs a song written by her and her sister Elise, sort of about the event, and it gets national attention, and overnight she becomes something of a superstar. Celeste's parents hire Jude Law to help her navigate the music industry. He takes her out to LA, they record an EP, and lo and behold, she begins to take off. And the first act, which I've obviously honed in on, is a lot of fun to watch. You have a really interesting character, actually a series of characters, and Jude Law kind of supporting them. So while you've got these teenagers who really can't deliver a lot autonomously because you don't have any reason to really care about their worldview or who they are, Jude Law helps to pull out of them their characterization and give them sort of a motivation moving forward. And so what you're really seeing are these two very impressionable teenagers who come from tragedy and are being pushed more and more towards something that they're really not prepared for. And that's a very empathetic thing to digest. Act two picks up about 17 years later when Celeste is now portrayed by Natalie Portman. And what you find very quickly, and the last thing I'll say about the plot is she's become sort of a pill and alcohol addicted character. And it's a very familiar pop uh, archetype. Something that you're very used to seeing in the media and that you've seen before in movies. And that can be very effective based on how it's portrayed. But the interesting thing about this, from my perspective, was you really had a character whose innocence has been already destroyed in the first few minutes, who is almost a shell of herself and being developed and molded into this pop icon who really is never ready for what she's taking on, for the mantle and the responsibility that she's about to have thrust upon her. And that's something that you can really empathize with. Now, right off the bat, the issue of active shooters and school shootings is very near and dear to me in the sense that uh, I've obviously, like the rest of the nation, been kind of transfixed by the trend, and in my past life, it's sort of what my work revolved around from a protective standpoint. So the fact that the film handled that in an appreciable and adult, mature way that contributed a lot of interesting thoughts and dialogue to the issue was a huge positive. The second thing I'll say is I, like most people, am a huge sucker for the rise and fall of a band or musician storyline. One of my favorite films, for instance, is Tom Hanks' That Thing You Do, following the band The Uneaters. And what I really found appreciable in the script were there were music references that I think only really nerdy, pretentious music nerds would get. Like for instance, when Jude Law refers to a bass player as Jaco Pistorius. It's a stupid little thing, but as somebody who really digs like Weather Report and Jaco Pistorius, it's a great solid reference that shows a love of music in the script. And so when the film continues on to be more of a critique of the industry itself and of pop music in and of itself, it gives it a lot of credibility. And that's something that's very strong in this script is using dialogue not just to show who the characters are, but sort of their philosophies and where the film itself is coming from. And the biggest thing I'll say about Brady Corbett's script and direction is that the first half especially gives a lot of room for characters to develop. Now in the past when I talk about rise and fall with Can You Ever Forgive Me, I discussed the fact that if you don't really experience the rise, it's tough to appreciate the fall. What Vox Lux does is it shows you the rise and then sort of cuts out the beginning of the fall and then the second half deals with who that character is left at a further point in her career. It was an interesting choice that I commend to show the rise and kind of skip the troubles and kind of go towards the latter act of this person's career. The problem is that when a character is so instantiated in her own problems, they do become sort of one note, and Natalie Portman's character, the way she's written, is kind of that way. She's already made some bad decisions, she already has some addiction problems, and while you can empathize, there's very few moments where you actually glimpse that character's humanity peeking out and she seems to have become a shell. And maybe that's a really good analogy for pop culture in general and for pop music in general. And there's even some dialogue that alludes to that, like, I like pop music because I like to make people feel good. It's not really about the music, it's about creating a sensation. And that's what pop music really is. It's about consumption and anything that's easily digestible so you don't have to think about it too much. And there's a few interesting things going back into the understanding and appreciation of music as displayed by the script. 
Uh, one is a point that's called out about how Celeste changes a lot of I into we, and that kind of speaks to the shallowness and the emptiness of not only the character, but to the art that they're creating. It's supposed to be mass consumption. And it really asks the question of, once the song is consumed, and once the artist is consumed, what's really left at the core? The problem is, the first act makes you think a lot, and the second half is really just witnessing people being dragged away from a car accident you never saw happen. Obviously, a lot of people from seeing the trailer alone began comparing Vox Lux to Black Swan. That's a fool's errand, just because it's Natalie Performin Perfortman? Perfort Natalie Perfortman. Hello. Just because it's Natalie Portman performing in a center stage type of role like Black Swan doesn't mean you should compare it to that. And part of the problem in the trailer is it makes it seem like this pop culture glam kind of movie. And it's really not. It really is a character study at its core. And while that's good, again, that limitation on the character in the second half, who really is set in her ways, kind of undercuts that entire aspect of it. And even Jude Law, who is fantastic throughout, comes into this film uh, 17 years younger as the exact same character he is 17 years later. He doesn't seem to have aged, he doesn't seem to have changed in any appreciable way. So there are some weird incongruities with that giant time lapse. And probably one of my biggest complaints with the film is that the third and final act is legitimately just a dance performance. I mean, it is her on stage at a concert playing three or four songs front to back, and it's a very kind of Madonna, big show, Lady Gaga type of feel. But the biggest thing I went back and forth on is how that concert is shot because while you've seen how sad this character is and what a fake performance she's putting on because she's such a destructive and decrepit character on the inside, she is performing on stage as this full of life, happy, giddy persona. That can be very effective. And a lot of the way that that concert is shot is with closer camera angles that are kind of over that barricade, cutting out the audience and just showing her and her dancers on stage. And part of that felt a little cheap at times because it really just highlights some of the choreography and makes you really super analytical about whether that was good or bad. But part of it also is pulling back that curtain and reminding you that you are watching a fake performance. And so while it is visually interesting and while I think they're doing a lot visually to make you ask questions about who the character is and how far she's come or how much of a rest of development she's stuck in from when that tragedy occurred to her, the film does feel like it kind of ends abruptly and from a film that asks so many questions early on, ending it with just this linear performance almost feels like kind of an easy cop-out that feels like it brings resolution that it really doesn't justify. So at, at the end of the day, how did I feel about it? I loved the first half of it. I really thought it was one of the best first halves I've seen in years and I was super excited for where it went. The problem is it really didn't feel like it went or produced anything after that point. It's a worthy entry into a catalog of socio-ethnomusicology kind of conversation. What's the nature of art? What's the nature of music? Who are these people? And really making you reevaluate what pop art and pop culture is. There are great performances. Jude Law is great. Natalie Portman's good. Um, Jude Law is interesting in the sense that, you know, hearing him with that Brooklyn accent, seeing him the way he's performing, I thought he was really effective and believable. Natalie Portman is a lot of the same things, but she almost comes off as one note. Imagine if Marissa Tomei had felt like a plank of wood in My Cousin Vinny. Like, you're getting into that character, you got that voice down, but when it feels like the voice is the character, you kind of feel cheated out of a good performance. The younger actors in this are great. Rafi Cassidy is fantastic. I thought the direction was really good. I thought the script had a lot of interesting questions and maybe it's just undercut by that last half. The other positive to the film, and I'm not sure how much of it I'm projecting into the film and how much of it was just good in and of itself, is the film is sort of narrated by Willem Dafoe talking about what's going on in all these characters' heads at certain times and also filling in time gaps. And the way that it was accomplished to me is very effective. Voiceovers are a way to get inside of a character's head and to get greater understanding that you can't display visually. And the best way I can compare how they do it in this film is it, to me, recreated the same narrative effect that I got from Network. It's really somebody telling you a story uh, completely objectively, showing the highs, the lows, and almost as if it's a post-mortem of a great tragedy. It really compels you to stick through it. Would I revisit it? Probably. So if those things seem interesting to you, it's worth checking out. However, it's a close to two hour film. The last 20 minutes or so are this concert, so it kind of feels underwhelming in that sense. And if it doesn't sound like something you'd want to sit through, it's gonna feel like a gut punch, which is how it felt to me. Like we, we got to this point and now what are we really doing anymore? If you especially don't like movies that involve mass attacks, things like school shootings or active shooter events, if that makes you uncomfortable, then you know, yeah, it's a pretty impactful and dramatic first 10, 15 minutes. In the end, it's as close as you can get, in my opinion, to a 50-50 split of whether I'd recommend it or not. For the feeling I got for the first half of it, I would absolutely go back and do it all over again. As for the second half, did I get anything out of it? Did I take anything out of it? 
No, and that's pop music, so maybe that's what they were going for. Of course. God damn it!